and we are the fruit of his action. Glory to God. So again, when we talk about these things, I, I want to uh, share in the context of faith and, and of grace. Hallelujah. All right. One of the ways that we really love God, bless God, is by seeking God. John 14, 21 says, he who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. You can't know the commandments of God unless you find them out. Amen? So we're getting in the word. Hallelujah. So we need to see things, honestly, in the context of love. Amen? You men, when your wife gives you a honeydew list to do, man, if you just see it in the context of inconvenience, I tell you, you'll lose your joy. Amen? But if you see it in the context of men, it's something you can have ability to minister to her and likewise a a woman to minister to her husband. I mean, it makes all the difference with your kids, children with their parents. Man, not just to do it, to do it, but to do it, amen, out of love. Glory to God. But how we got saved God came to us, but we had to respond. Amen? And then when he had to go through a process of saying, man, is this for real? We had to count the cost. We had to seek God, like the Bereans did in the book of Acts. That's how real salvation comes to people. Jesus said, you need to count the cost. Amen? So we enter into this love relationship by saying, God, You're worthy of the cost. I'm going to sell everything I have, amen, for the pearl of great price. Man, for the treasure I see, I'm going to give everything up for it. And you don't have to twist my arm to do it. Amen? If you've got to be manipulated and appeased to accept Christ, there's something wrong. Amen? In fact, Jesus, many times, to see if someone really wanted him, accentuated the price. He said, man, the birds have nests. Sometimes I don't have anywhere to lay my head. Foxes have holes, but I don't know. Man, I'm out here in the wilderness. Amen. So consecration, part of it's seeking God. Amen. Part of that is, is walking by faith. Glory to God. Man, you're, you're not going to enter in, and I'm not going to enter into viability with Jesus. Unless we learn to walk by faith. God is a God who relates to us in the context of faith. Faith is the bridge between heaven and earth. Faith is that which is in your spirit that causes you to know that you know that God is, that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And to know that what you're believing for will come to pass and will come to pass in a reasonable time. Glory to God. A lot of us have heard of the word of faith doctrine. It's not a movement, it's a doctrine. The word of faith is, you know, came in the movement. A lot of people associated way back with Smith Wigglesworth. Some associated with F.F. F. Bosworth, some with Kenneth Hagin. People like that. But I'll never forget, Kathy and I were in a, a spiritual church was good. I was 22 years old. They made me an elder, I think, because I had a, Bible, I was teaching at the high school and I had a Bible club that was pretty big. And I, I shouldn't have been an elder, really. I wasn't ready for it all. And I was seeking God. Because you know when you're an elder, you got to pray for people. So people will come to the altar, and I'll be real honest with you, we weren't real successful. Most people got worse rather than better. And I'm honest, I went to the pastor and said, I don't want to be an elder anymore. He said, why not? I said, because it doesn't work. He said, well, that's all in the hands of God. I said, well, God must not want much to happen. And I was real honest. And I began seeking God. Someone gave us some CDs. I think it was about Kenneth Copeland. And said, man, just start talking about the will of God. Him being good. Him wanting to to, to bless and heal. And, and, And man, it changed my life. But then I shared it with a number of people, and they just like, it really, I never forget Kathy and I were laying in bed listening to these uh, tapes back then, and we were just, we're saddened because we didn't hear it before, 
But we're so happy when we heard that, man, that God is a God that answers. It changed our lives. But see, with any, you got to seek God. You have to seek God to get God. Amen? And there will always be impediments in your way. There will always be impediments. Well, now I know if somebody was into that faith thing and you know what, and they robbed a bank. You know what? Well, so what? Jesus didn't rob a bank, did he? <laughs> Amen? I'll tell you what. You heard his testimony. I was working with some young adults. I was teaching high school, working on my master's coaching. I'm working with some young adults. What happened is we started a coffee house. Guys went out. They busted a real drug party, about 15 people in it. All these people got saved. We baptized them in a swimming pool. These guys were out to lunch. You know what I'm saying? So I was discipling most of them. We got them, tried to get them a church, but they wouldn't go to church. So I'm discipling this. So I'm discipling one guy. I knew it wasn't good when I was praying for him to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he got a call from his, uh, his uh, bookie. You know what I'm saying? He took off. I knew that wasn't a good sign. So I said, man, you got to give yourself, you accepted Jesus, but you got to grow. You know what I'm saying? This is a true story. The next day, he robbed a bank, man. That does a lot. How's your ministry? It's doing great, man. Yeah, well, the, one of the guys just got saved, robbed a bank, 37000 bucks. never found it. Yeah, ministry's doing all right. That's for real. But the good thing is, <clears throat> anyways, God moved in. He had PTSD, and actually a guy was controlling him, a businessman in town, and the businessman got like 15 years in jail, and this guy got like three years. He never recovered the money. It was armed robbery. I went to the Pittsburgh jail and ministered to him and this. But anyways, but things happen, man. Things happen. There will always be impediments in your way to receiving from God and seeking God. Even seeking God, you're always going to be too busy. You're never going to find time to seek God, to have a quiet time. You've got to make time. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I tell you, I'm speaking to me as well. And it's hard with the faith. I remember, uh, and people, I mentioned it in Strong in Faith, whether it's Kenneth Hagin or Smith Wigglesworth or John G. Lake. They all have frailties. There's no human being that's perfect. And there was, uh, I'll never forget going to a conference. It was on faith. And man, there's, there's a guy outside the bunch of people just with signs that faith is, doesn't work. And here this guy, uh, and the preacher shared, he said, man, you know, this guy's son was on a hunting trip with him and wandered away, and they couldn't find him, man. He died of exposure. Wow. He said, it broke my heart, but he got bitter against God, and he just threw everything away. And uh, so for like six months, nine months, almost a year, he was uh, doing his best to get revenge. Isn't it amazing? Three years ago, the number one TV show was called Revenge. And, uh, but about a year after that, he called up uh, this minister. And he said, you're not going to believe us. He said, I have, an older, I have a younger son. My, my, my younger son, I'm sorry, died. My older son, we're hunting for him now. See, the, when you haven't had closure, the devil will try to come again. It's a true story. He said, he's away from the party. He's been gone we don't think there's any hope. And that minister was so gracious. He said, we're, he said, I'm so sorry for He said, don't worry about it. Man, they broke the curse. Sometimes you have to break the curse. And they found him in about 20 minutes. But there's always going to be impediments. Why, you, know, you know what I'm saying? But we have to say, God, I, I love you enough to keep going when it's difficult. I'm going to get better rather than bitter. Amen. I know this is strong. Remember, next Sunday, we're going to talk about receive it, okay? All right, so you all come back. Amen. Uh, amen. Lisa's from Virginia Beach. You all come back. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Missions. People don't see God regarding missions because they're so afraid they're going to end up in Africa marrying an anteater. They really are. And I was like that. I'm ordained by a very missions-oriented church, Day Spring. They have literally a couple thousand churches throughout the whole earth. It's amazing. Man, if you didn't, if you haven't been out of the country about 10 times, they think you're backslidden. And that's true. 
Now, Kathy's been to China and Hong Kong, different places. Man, the farthest I've been is Toronto. You know what I'm saying? And people look at it, and it's like, so I said, all right, I'm seeking God. Where do you want me to be? And uh, I'm open to go anywhere. But it took me a while to get there. Because I thought God was speaking a certain country in the Middle East that was very dangerous, which was okay, but I had four daughters, and it wasn't a good place for them. And I'm going to be very honest with you. I told Kathy, she said, I'm up for it. She's always up for it. <laughs> Seriously. I, I'm going to be honest with you. It took me a year and a half to make the consecration. When I'm honest, when I, count, when I make a covenant with somebody, when I, when I count the cost to make it, I'll go all the way. And I said, Lord, I'm willing to die there because people had died there. And then God spoke to me. I, I mean, it's almost audibly and said, you know what? I'm saying no. And I was angry because I wanted to go. Made connections, the whole deal. And he said, I just wanted to see if you're willing. I said, wow. Because saved a year and a half, huh? But the uh, bottom line is, it took me that long. But you see, at least I got to it because, man, but because uh, I did love God at the same time, man, it was a battle. It really was daily. The baptism of the Holy gifts of the Spirit. Again, God comes to us. And man, maybe someone doesn't understand. And there's someone thinks if I don't have this, I'm going to be somehow second class. You're not second class to anybody. The baptism of the Holy Spirit doesn't make you better than anybody. It just empowers you. Glory to God. But you have to make a decision. I, I remember I, I, I thought I felt it was God seeking God, and I got baptized in the spirit. I was being discipled by a system pastor at the church I'm ordained from, Day Spring. His name was Joseph Jeremita, just an amazing man of God. I'll never forget, there was a guy from a Baptist uh, background. And I had just received the Holy Spirit, and he said, you know, I will never believe in that. I'll never believe in the gifts of the Spirit, because that's how I was raised. It would just cause too much turmoil. I was just young, I was just young in the Lord. I'm only 18. 19. And uh, I'll never forget, I was at this assistant pastor's house. He had, uh, anyways, he had a great testimony. He used to own a really bad bar in Braddock, East Pittsburgh. And anyways, got saved. And, but uh, we were just talking. And uh, this guy called and said, my wife is in the house. She has a gun to her head. And Joe, uh, he went. And uh, I'll never forget, because the next week that guy was there and he said, I'm not trying to manipulate you, but it would help us if you prayed in the spirit and got dead and God prayed immediately. And she came out, I mean, like in 30 seconds. But what, see, it's about to love us. Seek God. Someone says, well, I'm not going to do that, man, because, again, I know people that were hypocritical that walk in the gifts of the spirit. I know people that did this and did this. Again, get your eyes off of people and just get them off of Jesus, on Jesus. Amen? All right. Don't shut me down, amen, when I'm preaching. But this goes with everything, decisions. Decisions determine destiny. They really determine destiny. You know, I, I've got to come to a place to make a decision and say, you know what? I'm never, ever going to say this to my wife or to my kids. I've got to come to a decision and say, you know what? No matter what, I'm never going to blame God. I've got to make a decision when I don't understand what's going on not to enter into depression. See, it's so much better when you're filled with God so you can do it. Be if you make the decision beforehand, it's already settled. If you have to make a decision when you're in the midst of trial, that's when it's going to be tough. I'm not sure if... God heals. I'm not sure if he loves me. I'm not sure if, you know, I've been forgiven. I'm not sure if, if I can do this. I've got to make the decision that I'm a Romans 8 individual and not a Romans 7 individual. Uh, the Romans 7 pre-born again man where it says I, the things I want to do, I can't do. The things I, you know, I don't want to do, I end up doing. 
I curse that because that's not me. I'm the person that has the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead in me who quickens my spirit that causes me to believe, glory to God, and gets confirmed because I've been qualified by the blood of Jesus. I've got to make a decision to walk in. You will be so surprised, the number of men especially, that don't want to make a decision that way. What would my church think? Well, who gives it? Well, man, if your church doesn't get joyful about you being a Romans 8 person, go somewhere else. What would my family think? If they'll think I'm prideful. No, here's what pride is when you say something different than what the Word of God says. Amen. Amen. Decisions. Mm, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory to God. Counseling a man, his wife had a, a sickness, some type of fibromyalgia, and I really never met him before, and uh, I think he was 39 and she's 39, something like that, and I, I tell you what, I could tell he was struggling, he kept saying, well, she can do more than she's doing, and I said, no, she can't, not right now, we'll believe God, but he was degrading her, I said, son, no, they were 29. I'm sorry, 29, 29. I said, son, you need to make a decision to love your wife and make a decision to stop degrading her and believe in her and stop seeing what you want in the context of your selfishness and make a decision. Man, we met six times. I don't know why I kept coming back. And I kept telling them the same thing. I said, man, I, 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 really, I'm pretty straightforward. And I said, man, you make me throw up. I said, you still haven't made the decision, have you? He said, no, I haven't. At least he was honest. He come in one day, he said, you know what? I made a decision to love my wife no matter what she's going through. And you know what? She started to come around supernaturally. You need to make a decision. Amen? Glory to God. Mm. Amen. But see, it's all in the love of God. We're not talking about legalism. We're talking about love. We need to make a decision. Amen. To love our children. And they're going to have ups and downs. We need to make a decision to love the body of Christ. Sometimes that's the toughest at all. I heard one guy say, I love Jesus, but man, Christians drive me nuts. Amen. At the same time, the body of Christ is awesome, amazing. When you're with people of like precious faith who are seeking God, there's no better place to be than with the family of God. And we all have weaknesses. All of us. We all have frailties. But the bottom line is this. Love covers a multitude of sins. The Bible says that, you know, love is patient. We're all growing. And the bottom line is, you know, we're all under construction. We're, we're going to be under construction until the day we die and be with Jesus. But we need to appreciate one another as we're seeking God together. Man, esteem what Jesus is doing. The Bible says esteem your brother and sister higher than yourself. I can honestly tell you, and I get more excited. I can honestly say this when somebody else is getting blessed than me because I, I just it is. Glory to God. Amen? But we, it comes down to love, doesn't it? <clears throat> but you have to be secure in yourself, and you have to love yourself. You need to love yourself. A lot, a lot of people struggle with, self, with loving themselves with self-concept because of their past, their weakness they're struggling with. But the Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. Man, if you don't love yourself, you're not going to love your neighbor like you should. Amen? I look at it this way. If God says you're worthy, you're worthy. If God says you're a value, you're a value. If God says you're lovable exceedingly, guess what? Agree with God. Amen? Bible says if your heart condemns you not, you have confidence with God. Didn't say if your mind condemns you not. If your emotions condemn you not. If your heart condemns you not, you've got confidence. Amen. Whew. Glory to God. The body of Christ. We're the, when we were a campus ministry, there was a young lady. She's now a very successful missionary. 
Man, she'd pray for her buddy, uh, her brother. He was saved, but man, he was like, we had a coffee house. He'd come and he'd come high and just, man, it just drove me nuts sometimes. And she always say when we were praying, man, I see him as just an unbelievable man of God. And usually I can see that. Man, I was struggling there. You know what I'm saying? I'm serious. And I tell you what, now he is one of the main teachers for one of the largest Christian organizations in the world, worldwide. He is amazing. Glory to God. God can take you from one place, amen, and put you in another. Amen? amen. Glory to God. Right. And we need to love the world. The world doesn't know what love is. You say, man, the world is messed up. They are. Probably messed up just like you and me before we were saved. Sometimes we just need to ask ourselves a question. Remember you? Remember you? Shh. Wow. It's the love of God that will break yokes because it's the goodness of God that brings people to repentance. Amen? Yeah, people will come to Jesus if they, and sometimes they need to hit bottom, but that's not God's best. He wants you to come to him for him. <coughs> Excuse me. Glory to God. All right, second area of ministering to God is being filled with God. Kind of goes in with a little bit of what we're going to talk about next week. But I'll be honest with you, there's a price to pay for following Jesus. Yeah, you need to be in the Word. You need to be in prayer. You need to be in fellowship. All those things. But man, it is not an obligation. It's not to be an obligation. It means it's meant to be a blessing. And I understand we're busy. Mark chapter 4 says, man, the cares of this life. Wow. Man, they come at times, don't they? Wow. Why'd this person do this? Man, what's up with that? Busyness comes in. Needs come in. Might be financial. Might be a struggle you're going through with familiar. It comes in. But we need to make a decision to say, God, I'm going to give you my quiet time. Now, if you're a younger Christian, just start out with 10 minutes. I, I try, you know, somebody else might do six or seven hours. That's between them and God. You don't have to compare yourself. But Jesus said, can you not pray with me at least one hour? I, I like to say, man, try to get one hour just between you and God. Just one hour. A day and just... Make it a time of getting the word and pray, maybe worship, listen to worship music. Glory to God. Watch some testimonies. Glory to Jesus. I heard this, uh, well, two things. When I was in high school, I was pretty good in basketball, and uh, we had a good team. And uh, when I was in 10th grade, I was on a varsity team, and the JV practiced from, uh, I think, 330 to 530, right? No, 3.30 3 to 6. We practice from 6 to 8.30. You know, every one of us, as God is my witness, we're there at 5 o'clock. And I remember the coach coming to us as a team and saying, you guys are coming too early. Man, wouldn't that be nice for a pastor to say? Amen. <laughs> but seriously, we love the game. Now, we had our identity in it too much. But what I'm saying is this. Nobody had to prod us to go to practice, and they were hard. Nobody has to prod an unbeliever to go usually to a, a party on the college campus. There aren't kids on college campuses sitting there saying, man, I really want a party, but I don't have, I don't have the emotions. I want to go to the party. I want to go to the party. I want to get high. I want to go to the party. No. It's there, isn't it? It's inside their evil nature. We have a nature inside of us that hungers for God. Amen? And out of love for him, we just want to be there. There's a story, and I believe it's true. There's a young lady. I think she's in her early 20s. And uh, she made a commitment to Jesus. She said, you know what? She was in college. Every day from, I think it was from 8 to 9, I'm going to come to this place in her dorm downstairs and I'm just going to meet with you from 8 to 9. 
And she went back on that commitment. And about six months later, she said, man, I'm really sorry. And she had a vision before she went back there. And she saw Jesus there every day waiting for her. Jesus waits for you and me. You don't have to get Jesus to come to your quiet time. You might not sense him, but he's already there. He's already beat you to the table. But if you see a quiet time getting in the word, and I know the enemy tries to come in, saying you don't understand it like this person, this or that, it's all lies. But again, it comes down to just loving him. Amen. Glory to God. Praying. Amen. You know, uh, praying for the nations. Amen. Praying for Israel. We need to. <sighs> Seeking God. Man, there are things you're never going to get unless you seek God to find out what's going on. I remember somebody, uh, their young boy was really being harassed by demonic spirits. I mean, a lot of crazy stuff there on the mission field and a very tough deal. Him and his wife were new to the mission field. And man, this all kind of, you know, him getting sick, but they knew it wasn't just getting, it was, it was, it was just the enemy. And uh, finally he just said, you know what? I'm going to go up and fast and pray until God shows me. And God showed him a literal um, like a witch and a black magic warlock casting a curse on him. And it came to the point where his son couldn't even hear. And uh, he went out in the street, and that guy was right there. And he said, you will never, ever have dominion over me, my family, my son again. And instantly that boy's ears open. And that, that black magic warlock, whoever, whatever it was, ran away. But you see, what if he wasn't seeking God? Amen. We need to be filled with God. A lot of you know I like David Hogan, and I'm touched with him quite a bit. Man, last time he was here, I was sitting next to his wife, Debbie, on one side, Kathy was on the other side, and she had a video in her phone while he was talking. I was watching it, and she was crying, and she doesn't show that much emotion usually. To where he was over in another country, gets a call from his wife and his grandson, 18 and a half years old, had died. And man, it had died. <sighs> Long story short, uh, he just uh, kind of like what you did for FaceTime. But see, they grew up in this. They grew up in it in the sense they, uh, with, with, with the people being raised from the dead, they grew up in it. Matthew 10, 7, and 8, they were taught that since they were three years old. And he spent about an hour and a half on the phone. That kid came back to life. And I was right on the phone right in front of me. Glory to God. But you see, we want to be ready. Amen. And that's why it's so good. Man, accept Jesus when you're young. Get in the word when you're younger. I'm not saying God can't come to you when you're older. But man, be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 says be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. It should be fun to get in the Word. I, I, I watched some crazy testimonies. I mean, they are so good. Catherine Cohen of old. I mean, you know, just uh, Randy Clark. New. I mean, just crazy testimonies that are real. Just because of the love of God. Amen. All right, the last one which we're going to spend the most time on, all right, is just uh, walking by our spirit and not by our soul, all right? And this is what a lot of people don't like. But I tell you what, it's one that's so important. All right? Now, we've shared on this a lot, but I want to preface by saying this. Your spirit, if you're born again, is the real you. It's the part of you where the Holy Ghost indwells. It's where the nature of God is. Your spirit is the righteousness of God in Christ. Let me share this. There's teaching about good people. Just because somebody has some teaching. Now, if they have a goofy teaching like there's not one way to heaven, then you, di and that's the you dispose of that person. But there's a lot of people that, uh, they're good people. They share the gospel, but they sometimes just have some wrong teaching. And the teaching that says that 
the blood of Jesus covers your sin so God can't see the evil in you and graces you to live. That's a lie. The blood of Jesus does not cover your sin. It destroys your sinfulness and glory to God has given you a new nature. Amen? Wouldn't that be horrible to go to heaven and the real you not even be able to be seen? God has made the real you righteous. Glory to God. Man, he who knew no sin became sin that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Woo, glory to God. Amen. So uh, our spirit is a part of us has been born again if we're saved. Our soul is our mind, our natural mind. Our emotions, our personality, our willpower. Amen. And includes our, 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 and then of course our body. So really you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Amen. Well, the enemy will do everything he can to come against us. And the way he comes against us is through the soul. The book of James says that God is the father of our spirits. Satan is the God of this world. He's the God of the soul realm that's not sanctified. Now, your soul's good if it's sanctified. Amen. Amen. Amen? So let's look at some things here because I, I tell you, more people have been destroyed by not understanding this. But again, it's back to the love of God. Let's start with Adam and Eve. First of all, back then evidently, you know, animals could talk. The serpent was a beautiful being. He didn't crawl on his belly. He stood upright, very colorful, very beautiful, very intelligent. They should have never talked to the serpent. Why would you talk to the serpent when you can talk to God every day? So he began to lie to them. What was his lie? God's not good. God is a liar, he said. God said, you can't eat from the fruit of this tree. I don't know what it was. You know what I'm saying? Apples, we think. Or I don't know if it's a fig tree or whatever it was. Because he knows when you eat of it, you'll be just like him or even greater than him. Now, he's saying this because that's exactly what he did. Isaiah 14, five times Lucifer, who became the devil. Lucifer means bright and shining star. He was one of the chief angels. He said, I will exalt my throne above your throne. I will be worshipped as the Most High. So the very thing that got him kicked out of heaven it's the very thing that he's now trying to put on them. There's a lot of people that are so messed up, and they want to be your friends so you can be messed up with them. Seriously. So he said, look at that tree, man. It's a beautiful tree, isn't it? Man, if God didn't want you to eat of it, it would just have thorns and thistles, right? He's appealing to the natural mind. There's a way that seems right to the natural mind, and its way is death. We need to be able to discern the two. But see, it's in the context of the love of God. They knew better. They knew better. Eve entered into deception. Adam had the greater sit to me because he just stood there behind her. And listened and never said a word. Cowardly. And they, man, they kept looking at that tree. Kept listening to the serpent. When the devil comes and speaks something to you, you do not debate him. You tell him to leave. He does not have the privilege to talk to you. Amen? <sighs> And eventually, they gave up their birthright. They gave up their spirit, which was made in the image of God, for soul life. You know what soul life is? It's where you believe you know more than God. You become your own God. 
Isn't that familiar to today? Every professor that I know, man, they were showing me correspondence they get and from other people. My truth. My truth. My truth. Can I tell you something? I don't want to hear about your truth. I want to hear about his truth. Amen? Everything today is about being your own God. Mm. Just like them. So they sold out. It wasn't a game. They went from being beings of glory, man, to literally. Now they were covered with the blood of Jesus because he killed the animal covered them. But man, talk about a fall from grace. Well, what's it have to do? It has everything to do with us. The devil will always come to us through the natural mind and through our emotions. Mm. Circumstances. Man, have you ever had a time where you're just loving Jesus? You're sharing the gospel for Jesus. You're doing everything right, seemingly. And man, you get hit with a storm. Wow. Circumstances are not lining up, man. It, it just doesn't seem like it's a good deal. And there's a battle. And God says, man, or the devil says, where's your God? Where's your God? And everything about him loving you, favoring you, dying for you, being in covenant with you, seems to be at odds with reality. Have you ever been there? You haven't. You haven't been far. Man, someone's sick and they're believing and there's a battle. Someone's kids are, man, on drugs and something happens and, man, you lose a job. You don't get a promotion you should get on and on and on and on. And the devil's right there to say that this guy's not a believer. This woman's not a believer. Look at them. Look at their house. Look at their car. Go with me, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. See, we're going to enter in to receive him from God next time. I keep saying that. But we need to understand that this is good stuff. Because this is what it comes down to in loving Jesus. Anybody can love Jesus when things are going well. Amen? That publishing clearing house. What is it, like, you know, 180 million people put in for it, three people get it, and they make it look like everybody gets it, right? I even think about it. $7,000 a week, right? Amen for life. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm thinking that, that should be a scripture verse somewhere, right? You know what I'm saying? I can claim it's not. You know, but the bottom line is this. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says, we, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but divine, divinely powerful, mighty. That's the same spirit of might. We talked about this that was on Jesus. The same spirit of might. Mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. What are imaginations? They are images contrary to the word of God and to the heart of God. Wow. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. I'm bringing in that into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, entering into the mind of Christ. Let me just give examples, heavy duty. One of the reasons we started the church, not the only reason. We had a young uh, woman come to us, and she had a girl, I think she was three at the time. She's a single mom. Loved the Lord. And uh, we're in campus ministry at the time. And she came to our house, and Kathy and I talked to her, and she was down. We said, what's up? That's a question I usually ask. What's up? Amen. Western Pennsylvania, right? So I said, what's up? And she said, you know, I, I was sexually abused a whole bunch of times when I was young. Really, really bad. Jesus helped me. I'm, I'm, you know, we help counsel her. She's doing well, but she said, you know what? I have such a fear. And my little girl getting 
not happening to her. And uh, she said, now listen to this. Now, I'm not going to name church. I, I, I'm for churches for sure. And some of these are good churches. They love God. They just maybe don't have understanding on this. So, you know, don't put people down when they don't have light. It's one thing when you have light and don't walk in it. But it's another thing when you don't have light. Amen? And so, but some of them were really, they didn't even believe the Bible. She said, I went to like 15 churches. And I mean, I mean like a 15 mile radius. I asked her one question. Can I be assured that my little girl won't be harmed in the same way I was? And she said, you know, not one of them could tell me definitely yes. I thought, my God, if God's not better than that, we all need to go home. Now, I'm not saying that if there's been abuse in your family, you know what I'm saying? That, I mean, the devil's cup, you just get them healed and go on. But not one pastor. I said, and Kathy and I said, you know what? As long as you're doing the best you can, you're going to have some ups and downs. As long as you're doing the best you can, you're under covenant. God has made a covenant with you to protect you. Psalm 91. And some of these same pastors said, I was younger at the time, were angry at me because when we did marriage counseling, Kathy and I always teach that your kids will not be harmed. Will not be harmed. And that, man, this girl, she was lifted up, man. And her daughter's older now. I think she's like 16. She's doing wonderful. Glory to God. But you see that image. But see, in the natural mind, everybody in her family had been abused. And the natural, it was reality to her. Thank God we're not in the natural, amen? If you live by the natural mind, you're going to live in the natural world. And here's the deal. The natural world is not good. Somebody has got to say, it's not going to happen again. Somebody's got to say, no, I break the curse. Man, God was there. He understands. He hurt more than I did. I'm going to be okay. But now, with my children and their children, their children's children, it's going to be okay. Well, what's this have to do with love and God? Everything. Because you can only be intimate with God and love God by your spirit. Mm. I'm going to say that again. You can only be intimate with God and love God through your spirit. You ever say something with your mind that you really didn't mean? You know what? God didn't even hear that stuff. Because he's not a mind. He's a spirit. Mm, Jesus. Mm. So this is strong stuff. But man, sometimes it's easier said than done. You know, we get in this comparison thing. Man, if God loved me as much as he's no respect of persons, how come this person has more than me? You know, we keep messing up. Um, and back in the day, we had a lot of Grove City. We started a group at Grove City College campus called Warriors. I still think it's one of the largest groups on that campus. And uh, at one time, we had, because uh, there was no other groups on campus. Well, there was Salt Company, uh, which was coalition, but... We had one meeting. There's only 2,200 kids at that school. We had 1,100 kids come show up at the meeting. I had the vice president of school call me and the whole deal. They had to monitor us. But uh, anyways, uh, man, a lot of the professors, they taught predestination that God actually hates certain people. Loves some people, hates others. Some people are to be vessels of honor. Some people he's chosen to dishonor. So there's some people that want to get saved, but they can't. Some people don't want to get saved, but they do. And they pound it in. I mean, I know it's nuts, right? But you hear it so often. But here's the deal. It will line up through the devil with your circumstances. I can't tell you. I've had so many kids, especially being in this one professor's class, and say, you know what? I think he's right. Well, why do you think he's right? Because, man, I lost my 10-page paper I did. Man, my girlfriend broke up with me yesterday. And you know what? And my car broke down. I don't think God, I don't think I really am favored by God. And I would say, it doesn't seem like it, does it? <laughs> but you know you are because in your spirit. 
See, in your spirit, you know this word is true. In your spirit, you know it's true. So loving God is walking in your, by your spirit. I was shared this a lot, but for some reason I feel led to share it today. When I was a younger Christian, I lived in East Pittsburgh, and the uh, river was right beside uh, Riverside Park in Oakmont. And man, I'd be struggling with anger, whatever it was. And I would mark on my calendar how many days I would walk righteously on my calendar. Man, when I got up like the nine, I thought I was the, you know, doing unbelievable. You know what I'm saying? God was going to answer my prayer today. Nine days, you know what I'm saying? Didn't curse somebody. Nine, and I used to have a lot of issues. And uh, used to. Didn't anyone hear any laughter? All right. Amen. Glory to God. And uh, so I'd go up and every day. And I didn't know the Bible that well. And I didn't have someone to stop me like I should. And I did later. And I'd say, God, help me. Help me. And I would hear this. I didn't even know it was a verse back then. Walk in the spirit, which is walking by your spirit. I didn't even know what my spirit was back then. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And, and I, you know, it's like the person that's lost in the woods. You've been there for hours. And you see a sign. You get excited. And then you go to the sign and it says, you are lost. That's a big help, isn't it? You are lost. That's how I felt. I was confused, angry. Man, I, could, I just cry and cry and cry because I wanted to do it. You know what I'm saying? Finally, I got to see what this meant. Walk through the power of the Holy Ghost. Walk, hallelujah, through your spirit where the Holy Ghost is and victory will come. Glory to God. So many people have bought the lie that they are according to what they think or feel. The devil has convinced them that that's the real them. And it's a lie. You are what this word says you are, no matter how, what you think or how you feel. Amen? What your natural mind says. Amen? All right. I could give a lot of examples, but the bottom line is this. Uh, man, the natural mind gets into a lot of crazy stuff. You know, I must have this now. <sighs> whether it's sexual sin, whether it can be a promotion. You know, the, the, again, we, our flesh is weird, man. Our flesh gets into these things of comparison. Our, our flesh gets into these things that, you know, I got to intervene and help God out. You ever been there? Man, someone you care about, they're struggling. You're going to help God out. Man, maybe they're on drugs. And God just saying, you know what? You pray. Let me do the doing. First Peter 5, 7, cast your care upon me because I care for you. Amen. Play on words. Care in that context being anxiety. Cast your anxiety upon me because I care for you. Sometimes it's the hardest thing to do, isn't it? It's the hardest thing to do. All right, boy, I thought I had more time than this. Emotions. Whew. There are more people in hell today because of their emotions than there is anything else. I can't tell you the number of people. I, 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 I was counseling for a large church. This guy was a leader there, supposedly. He stopped off in his sheets or something like this. He married with, I don't know, he had two kids, married, great wife. And he just saw this lady pump a gas on the other pump. He said, there was just an attraction that just drew me. I said, really? Well, why don't you cut the draw and curse the insanity and not live like a dog? Can I be more explicit? I could, but I won't. When you live by, I'm going to tell you something. I, I know this is strong, and maybe some people watching TV or whatever, they might not get hearing this. Here's the deal. When you walk by the natural mind and you walk by your emotions, you're living like a dog. Isn't that what a dog does? Man, if that dog knows that, you know, poodle's over there, and man, another dog comes, guess what? He doesn't have the rationale to say, I'm going to wait. He's got, you know, him and that other dog. Dogs live by their emotions. That's why they're in heat. 
That's what happens, right? There's a lot of Christians that live in heat. And it's not the Holy Ghost. Emotions can kill you. You've got to make a decision. I've got to make a decision that I will not let emotions tell me who I am, what's going to happen to me, and what I'm doing. Amen. Because I love God. Because I love God. Amen. Emotions of fear. Whew, man. There's times where it's not easy. Man, you fear something like that young mother did. Emotions, man, they were real to her. The same emotions that she had when she was harmed, she felt. It seemed to be so real that this was going to happen to her. Man, you, those are parents. Have you, how many times when your young man or young woman had did not come home on time? Man, I tell you what, they're supposed to be home by 11. They got the car. 11.15, I'm cool. 11.30, the devil says, you know what? They're rebellious. 12 o'clock, he says, they've been in an accident and they're not coming home. And emotions bear witness with it. I've had that happen to me. We all believe God. Emotions, loneliness. Man, I have so many people. Now the thing is, not getting high, you self-medicate, right? So you can have better emotions to get right vibes. Anger, rage. Man, all right, this is going quick. I'm going to close it up. Emotions. The reason I'm so strong is so many people. They live by their emotions. If it feels good, do it. We have to understand emotions have nothing to do with reality. Provision, again, I want to love Jesus. That's your provision. I want to love my wife, my, my husband, my kids. I want to love the body of Christ. I want to love the unsaved. Making a decision. Man, I, I'm not going to let this trigger me. I'm not going to go against the word of God and believe anything contrary to the word of God. Whether it's my natural mind, whether it's my emotions, whether it's something, nothing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then we enter in, praise God, to grace. Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And we begin and we live by faith. It's all about loving Jesus, amen? It's all about loving Jesus. We love him through consecration. We love him through being filled with God. We love him through walking by our spirit and not by our soul and our body. Sometimes it's easier said than done. There's a cost. But here's what's exciting. That's why this name is so important. Because Jesus, who has authored us to be able to live like this, will cause us to live like this. Glory to God. Because he's greater. He's in you. Greater is he, amen, that is in you than anything that will come against you or me. In our soul, our mind, our emotions, or our body. And that's why we need each other to encourage one another as well. Amen. Stand with me if you will. All right. Glory to God. Can someone say amen? amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you're being loved by Jesus, everything you perceive is different. When we're confident in his love, everything you perceive is in the context of, man, you see it for your good. Even when he tells us, you know, okay, I need you to do this or whatever. Perception is the key. Man, when you love Jesus, everything changes. When you're having a bad time, when it's so hard, the circumstances are so strong, when emotions are raging, when your mind is giving you fits, Everything's different because his grace will rise. 
Glory to God. His word will come alive to you. We do this every Sunday. If you're in this place today or watching my television or YouTube, and you're not sure that when you die, you'd be with Jesus. Or if you know in your heart you're not walking with Jesus, you, or you never accepted him as your Lord and Savior, or you're just not walking with him. You're living by your soul rather than by your spirit. And you say, man, I want to enter into having a born-again spirit so God can be real to me. With every head bow, if that's you, don't be ashamed. Just put up your hand and we're going to say a simple prayer for you. Glory to God. Now, anybody that wanted to or those watching by TV, just say this prayer with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I see my need for you. Only you are my remedy in regards to destroying my sin nature, taking my punishment from my sin, and giving me motivation to live because you're so worthy. I repent of my sinfulness and confess my need for your love. Come into my life in Jesus' name. You said that. God has done what he said. Whew, Jesus. Well, I just sense Jesus around. Let's just take a minute or two. I know it's a little late, but just relax and let Jesus minister to you. There's something I just feel like he wants to say. I, I, he doesn't want, there's challenges. Man, there's challenges. But he really wants us to understand. He really is with us. And he really will get us through. And he really will cause us to walk in the faith that Jesus himself walked in. He's not condemning anybody. He's patient with us. When you fall down, he doesn't kick you. He picks you up. I just feel like the Lord really wants you to know he will get you to your desired end. It's, that's not, you know, it's not your job to get yourself to your desired end. I don't care if it's purity. I don't care if it's winning souls, what, making right decisions. Your job is to present yourself to Jesus and say, I thank you for your word. And it's God's job to cause the word to become life to you and give grace accordingly that you walk according to it. Isn't that good news? Woo! Glory. All right. Man, isn't that exciting? Wasn't it good to be able to tell that single mom that everything's going to be all right? I had three words of knowledge. It means I heard the name Sandra. A last name, I believe it was Landra, and I heard a, a name Evelyn. That means something to someone. Or you just have a need for prayer just to come up. Man, I just sense Jesus. Man, I just really sense Jesus. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you worship.